Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. Let me just check it's working okay. Um, let's see. Oh, yes, I think so. Um, <clears throat> yes. I hope you're doing well um, on this rather lovely uh, September day, 1st of September 2020. This is your Yoga Solutions Live. I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Enviro Approach to Bodywork. Uh, yes, I hope you're having a, a wonderful time wherever you are. So, uh, yes, I've had a, <clears throat> an interesting week. Uh, it's been full on. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, is this is this going on? I can't tell. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Um, yes, it, it's been an, it's been an interesting week. Um, oh, hang on. <laughs> Uh, having tech problems today. Let's get rid of that. Sorry, so I'm not di distracted by it. Um, yes, I, I think it's all working fine. I, I, if not, then uh, I don't know. Someone will need to phone me because I, I can't see it on on the Facebook page. But yes, I've had an interesting week. It's been full on. I've been. Um, <clears throat> we went down to um, see my mum and look after her for a couple of days, and um, she's doing much better which is good news and she's back to herself and worrying about her dogs rather than other things which is nice to hear and uh so you know a lot of driving because she lives in devon and uh in interspersed with a, an awful lot of diy because I, I built a shed um a storage shed to uh, as well as a deck finished off the deck um so yeah and uh physically when I when we got back from Devon, um, uh, my back was in a proper state, and and I hadn't because I hadn't um, been doing enough practice. I hadn't gone deep into my own practice. I'd, I'd only done a little bit of maintenance yoga, um, which, which is all well and good. But um, but um, yeah, uh, my body was complaining, and um i th i felt like it was my lower back when i was complaining I, I felt like it was difficult to be upright and things like that so um uh on the when when we got back i did a a, a practice on the deck and and um yeah it wasn't happening for me so um i thought i'd drop into a more more direct place and imagine that it was a student that was arriving with back pain and then I practiced with with that sort of inquiry rather than me going in to sort sort out my back and the the, the difference of how my body responded was phenomenal <laughs> it's it's funny it's it, it, the stuff I teach the stuff I teach is uh, the stuff I need to do um, I think that's the way with all teachers really is they you teach best what you need you know and um but uh it it, it blows me away it, it blows me away the the difference between trying to do stuff to the body and actually um tuning into the body directly and responding to it uh, and it's a shift of perspective it's a, it's a movement of the mind it's not um it's not a different way of practicing it's just you need to look at it from it the, the personal aspect the the mindset behind practice makes such a radical difference instant and um and then um yeah after a um, second day of practice I, I that 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 day in the evening i got in my um my personal practice my my sort of going deep into whatever it is just for its own sake you know and um and i was uh working with the latest poem that i downloaded which is rather good i might i might share that today actually because i don't think i've got any questions i didn't i didn't at the time of starting anyway um <clears throat> so um yeah i was practicing with this this poem i've created that is um describes the sort of sequential approach to how how you apply your attention and um Last night, I, I, when I fell asleep, I, I was dog tired. I was um, I was uh, asleep in front of the TV, and Abigail had to uh, drag me drag me to get to bed. And um, when I woke up this morning, I was 
I was changed in my upper spine, my my ongoing thing that I've that is kind of my reference for when I'm stressed and other things, the thing that complains. <clears throat> it's um yeah, the upper thoracic spine. And I, I looked at it uh, with a couple of mirrors this morning and it's it's changed. I, I don't seem to have the scoliosis that I had before. And um, the, when, when I woke up this morning, I was in a sort of yoga dreaming kind of state, half awake and uh, really clear. Uh, this happens when I'm asleep, is it? I'm really clear about what needs to happen. And um, the thing that happens when you resolve an area is that uh, up and up until that point of resolving it uh, you're you're working with the whole body to create the right conditions for it to be able to let go and once it's let go to be able to sort of relate through it in a useful way <clears throat> and um, this morning when i was half asleep i was asleep moving from the place uh, so it, it it stops being the object of your care and becomes the center of your being for it to truly integrate. And, that, and that's me immersing myself in that place that was cut off from me beforehand, being it. And um, so, uh, yeah, I woke up, I went, went and sat and meditated, which is very physical for me anyway. So it, it, it's not postures, it's just... Um, the to be able to meditate uh, basically i need to organize things so that i can rest through the spine behind the heart so that i can be upright without holding myself there but the usually that involves uh reorganizing my uh my so around my uh, solar plexus in relationship to earth and space making sure that my sacral plexus is fluid and all the various patterns uh, the throat the third eye um <clears throat> open at root and crown and um and when i've created all those conditions then i can kind of drop through um the spine behind the heart temporarily and that, that's when i feel like i'm meditating and um if i can do that through the breath and its release uh, then i i meditate for at least a cycle of a breath you know and um but this morning um because i was in that section of spine directly, that's where I was operating from, if you like. Um, I simply started with the heart at the center of things. And as I settled into it, as I, as I rested into it, the other things happened. All the other things happened. All the all the uh, responses that um, I spend most of my time creating for myself and for my students, all the all the relationships that allow this movement, um, happened because I was centered in the heart, as opposed to working to create the conditions to be able to do so. Uh, and it was a phenomenal experience, and it reminded me of some of the early texts that I read about what happens when you find the meditative state. Now, I won't go into it now, but um, yeah, it was um, it was phenomenal and I feel different. And uh, look, actually looking at the screen, usually usually my left shoulder's up, you know, usually I'm um, with the scoliosis. So I'm, I'm usually doing something, I don't want to overdo it, or was it put it back? I'm, I'm usually doing something like that. But um, yeah, it looks different today. Actually, just doing that for a second as, as my body's gone into alert, so I have to be careful. Um, anyway, there you go. That's me. Um, I feel changed and stronger and taller. Um, and uh, yes, life is good. Life is good. So uh, for today, uh, today's yoga solutions, uh, because I haven't had any questions, I, I shall share with you where I'm at, which is this um, application of this poem that I downloaded um, from the, Ak <laughs> the Akashic Records. Uh, that's where I think I, I feel like I get my information. It might be might be woo-woo um, uh, imagination, but that's what it seems like. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to come from my thinking. It comes, it just sort of comes direct. So um, yes, let's see. Um, yeah, so the thing I've been talking about is 
what you where how you need to um, how you need to guide your attention in in order to get to that place of of simplicity sim simple release the the goal is i think the goal in in yoga is to be able to um be able to let go into but to be able to let go into the outcome that you want um <clears throat> when we first go to yoga classes uh, we're told to relax and let go into things well you are if you go to a scarabelli inspired class and um you, and my experience for the first couple of years was i let go and the only thing that happened was i felt uncomfortable I didn't feel supported unless I was lying down. Um, and so, you know, my, my whole yoga journey was about how to find a way of reorganizing myself so that letting go led to the outcome that I was expecting, which is an elongation of the spine, a strengthening, all the stuff that I was talking about um, a moment ago. And... Um, Yes, so, and, and the way to do it is to not do stuff to yourself, but to, um, because if you do stuff to the body, the body becomes an object and you are instantly separating yourself from it. So um, you, you end up in control, but then you have to control your whole body, which isn't the point of yoga. It's, the point is to be able to let go. Uh, but we want the outcome to be that which we seek. So, um, yes, and the, yeah, so, what was I saying? Yes, so uh, I, I sort of come up with, I've got these ideas of the enviro-somatic principle, which is where you take your attention first to your contact and um, how you derive support from the earth, then um, to the space that you occupy, uh, because how you, um, whether you're supported or not in space depends on how you engage with space. Um, because if you're not engaging, in, you're simply sort of hanging off your body, hanging off your spine, hanging off your joints. It, if you're trying to relax, the alternative being holding yourself up with your spine and your joints. And um, both of those things are... Um, the first one can be relaxing, the second one can be enlivening, but they are both not, um, they both use energy. You know, when you, when you hang off your spine, the, the muscles of the spine have to work. When you hang off your joints, the tissue is being stretched. And so, and it's still given the job of keeping you in one piece. So, so the tissue either either get stretched and you're left unsupported or the tissue remains tense and gets stiffer so <clears throat> um, and when you have to lift to hold yourself up then the only way to let go you know, what happens when you let go is you fall down again and um, and that so begins the loop uh, the cycle the the treadmill the the karmic wheel of life you know and the whole point of yoga is to be able to escape that stuff and to enter a new reality new reality um so how to how to guide your attention so let's do something very simple um you don't have to be sitting cross-legged you can be in any situation um but sitting would be good um because i want to do a seated twist something very simple so just place yourself uh, if you want to follow me and follow the uh, this poem place yourself in a seated twist and the first line of the latest poem is it's very simple it's surrender your weight to your touch so uh, I didn't say surrender your weight to the earth because that that tends to lead to um, just sort of hanging off yourself. You you drop down towards it rather than giving your weight to it. So surrender your weight to your earth. Uh, sorry, surrender your weight to your touch. So what am I touching? I'm I'm touching with my hands on my thigh, and I'm touching the ground with my uh, the the underside of that foot there 
Uh, the other one is touching the other leg. And of course, my sit bones are touching the ground. Um, so a refinement of the poem, which I, always happens when I'm practicing, is surrender your weight to equal touch. So you've got to let go. You let go, and as you let go, you tune into where your touch is, hands, feet, sit bones. And as you surrender, you move things around a little until surrendering leads to a sense of your own contact catching your weight. So there may be some effort in your arms. There may be a little bit of a response from the front foot there, from the way the legs are crossing. So surrender your weight to your touch. Second line of the of this first, the second part of this first, the first line is is, and allow and from within allow space from the ground. So surrender your weight to equal touch. And from within, allow space away from the ground. So, what do I mean by that? The, the ground is underneath me, and it happens to be everything. Everything that I'm touching with is the ground. Um, although it's you know it's through my body in certain places. So, from my hands, it's through my legs, th through the top leg, it's uh, through the other leg. Surrender your weight through equal touch, from within, allow space from the ground. So, the, the, um, from within, within the core of the body here, we, as we relax, the, the viscera, the internal tensions can let go. And that relaxation will um, give you a sense of space where before there was a kind of density. So, and you allow that to develop away from the ground. So as I let go to my touch, instead of the core of the body collapsing down towards it, because I'm giving to my touch, the response on the inside is a kind of a back and up release that follows the uh, releasing diaphragm that happens when the breath is released. So when, when you let go of the breath, the diaphragm comes up and that f these fluid contents can migrate upwards provided you're not holding yourself up with your back. If you hold yourself up with your back, um, that doesn't happen. So surrender your weight through equal touch. Allow uh, from within, allow space from the ground. So how far does that go? Uh, it gets as far as my solar plexus. What about space from my from the ground that I'm connecting to from my hands? It's a bit vaguer, but if I'm feeling myself push with my elbows as I give my weight to it, then that's not space in the elbows. So allow space from within, allow space away from the ground. Now, if that's not forthcoming for you, the second line of the poem helps. The second line of the poem begins, make space. So you can, you can get involved with creating space. From your base, make space. And there's a, a drawing in and up, some people will call that um, Uddiyana Banda, there's something similar you can do in the throat, some people call that um, Jalandra Banda, and uh, to empty within the pelvis uh, there'll be a, a back and up from low down that some people call Mula Banda. Now uh, the, the make space um, is not different from surrender your weight to equal touch. So you, uh, the, these things that you pay attention to um, are kind of build upon each other to make the thing, uh, to make each part that you engage with more whole and more simple. So, you know, surrendering your weight to equal touch is one thing, 
but um, if, if, if that doesn't automatically lead to allowing space on the, away from the ground, if you make space, it's easier to surrender your weight to equal touch. Thing, the thing that would make it confusing is if, as you made space, you you changed your surrendering of weight. You started lifting. If you started to lift, then you're doing something opposite. So you're moving away from the first um, condition that you need. So they, they must build upon each other, and the outcome is they unite. So the... The drawing away from the ground on the inside will cause the base to take more weight. The contact to make, take more weight. Um, so, surrender your weight through equal touch. Allow from within, allow space from the ground. Make space. Meet space. And that, that's the engagement with space. Um, that I was talking about, but and there's a sort of sequ sequence to where you do that. So, make space, meet space behind. So I'm I'm sort of tuning into the meeting of space behind the back of my waist here, and because I'm with space, it tends to invite the arrival of the breath. Meet space, back of the waist. I get up into the back of the neck and then the back of the head. Meet space. And I mean I seem to be inhaling all the way. But um if you if you find that meeting of space, um then if you want it to stay with you as a as a place of support as you release the breath, then you need to identify the engagement with with your environment behind you, space behind you. And if you're not sure what I mean around the neck uh, or the back of the waist, you can put your hands there and feel it. You, know? you, you press into the, you, your back presses into the, your hand, your neck presses into your hand, your head presses into your hand to breathe. So essentially you're looking for support from those points of contact. You, you don't need your hands there to be able to do that. You just need to uh, take your attention there. So meet space behind, then to the side, doesn't matter which. So I, I, I seem to be opening out to the right hand side here. So behind, then even then to the side and having, and if I can do that through a full cycle of the breath, then something begins to change, you see? to the side. I'm, I'm going to try the side that I seem to be moving away from. Through the breath and it's released. And I, I don't know if you notice, I'm, I seem to be activating. My, 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 my feet are getting more involved. My hands are getting more involved. So make space, meet space, meet the space behind and to the side. And it's that meeting of space needs to be through a full cycle of the breath. You'll do it with the inhale. And uh, when you're meeting the space to the side, it, it, it's good to open the eyes and sort of take in the sound of things, take in the smell of things, you know, so that you're actually engaging with the, with the world around you, behind and then to the side. And when the heart is in front, which happens in that sequence, behind to either side, behind, behind to either side, and when the heart is in front, meet space from up to down, or release from up to down. Let's try the other side. We sort legs. So, how am I doing for time? Oh, let's take her. I'm uh, talking a lot. So, surrender your weight through equal touch. From within, allow space from the ground. Make space, meet space behind, to either side, and when the heart is in front, release from up to down.
So that the constructive stuff is, is what we would consider as practice, you know. You start with releasing your weight, you allow space, you, you make, make it happen, by, and then you meet and you engage with space behind either side. And when the heart is in front, it's when you've found a relationship to space that can invite the center of the thoracic spine forwards. When the heart is in, f in the front, then you can release from up to down. And that might be the as far as you need to go, you know. That that rhythm of things describes practice. But um, there's further progression where we start to change things radically. It'll be changed anyway. But um, the next part is bringing yourself back to your spine. You know, you've, you've worked out how to be with earth and space in a way that makes it possible for the spine to release forwards at the heart. But the next thing is, is to work directly to bringing the spine um, to the center of your actions and breath. So the next line is, with your hands and feet, gather bones together. So you stop all the pushing out and you, with your hands and your feet, there's a, there's a receiving mode where you draw yourself close to your hands, where you draw yourself close to your feet. And it's gathering your bones together. And this will, uh, I won't go too much into it because uh, we won't get any practice in, but um, just try it out. Imagine of collecting all your bones together. Um, so with your with hands and feet, gather bone, gather your bones together. The inner space, the inner spaces and the spine and your touch must come close together. So from hands and feet, collect your bones together. The inner spaces, your spine, and your touch must come close together. Then when the spine can give to equal base, so that's when you relax, you lean, and it'll be really quite heavy. When your spine can give to equal base, with the uh, release the breath, and with hands, you thread through space, hands and feet. So when your spine can be given to equal base, that's when the spine is directly supported by your touch. Release the breath, and from hands and feet, you thread through space. So all I need to do now, with the spine leaning on my base, through the body, the thing that's going to support me and move me is from that touch, from that release, I grow my fingers. And that growing of my fingers away from the touch will move me in space. I grow my toes. And the growing of the toes will move me in space. And what's more, if possible, the spine remains supported by my touch, my equal touch. So when you can give the spine to equal base, release the breath, and from hands and feet thread through space. With this rhythm, the flow can begin. So this is, the, this is a stronger practice, as in you're constantly gathering your bones together so that the spine can arrive on your base. And then as you release the breath, fingers and toes grow away from you to move you. So with this rhythm in place, the flow can begin with no holding in place. So with, with this rhythm, the flow can begin with no holding in place.
So it's it's we're not holding ourselves anywhere. We're constantly relaxing close to our support as we breathe and then expressing movement from the hands and feet with a centrally supported spine. And what you'll find is each time you release the breath and express in this way, it will turn you more. Let's go back to the first side. I've gone over time already. Never mind. I want to get through the whole poem. So surrender your weight through equal touch. From within, allow space from the ground. Make space, meet space behind, either side, and with the heart in front, release from up to down. With hands and feet, collect bones together. The inner spaces, the spine, and your touch must come close together. And when you can, when you can give the spine to equal base, release the breath. And with hands and feet thread through space. With this rhythm, the flow can begin. With no holding in place. But if you feel you can float, trusting the space all around. Because, because that practice brings you into a place where you are moved in space by hands and feet. And the spine is relaxed, still opening from the heart, you see. But if you, and if it brings you to a place where you can float, so if you find you can float, trusting the space all around, then just pause with the breath as you guide the heart to the center before you just give back to the ground. And what I've arrived in is a deeper twist, um, stronger responses from the deep part of my body, the core responses, the ribs, the release of the breath. A bit like what happened after releasing from up to down on the second line of the poem, but much stronger, much deeper, and much more connected to a simple release of tension. So I can surrender my weight through equal touch. And doing so leads to, from within, allow space inside, away from the ground. Make space, meet space behind either side, and with the heart in front, from up to down. With hands and feet, collect bones together. The spine, the inner spaces, and your touch must come close together. And when you can give the spine to equal base, and from hands and feet, with the release of the breath, you thread through space. Then if you feel you can float, trusting the space all around, just pause with the breath, breath retention. As you guide the heart to the center, at one stage, it was that as you as you guide what you care for to the center, because it's not limited to the spine behind the heart, but uh, as a generic principle, bringing the spine behind the heart to the center is useful. As you guide the heart, just so uh, just so just pause with the breath as you guide what you care for to the center before you just give back to the ground before you give from the heart to the ground, before you give from that place you care for. Ah, there you go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very useful uh, poem. If you, you can, um, if you watch this, feel free to write it down and uh, try and, you, you can work with 
uh, each section, and I've sort of divided it up. The the um, surrendering your weight to your touch, allow uh, from within, allow space from the ground is one line, and that's something you could practice with all day. It'd be fantastic. Um, and then when you sort of hit a brick wall, when you can start to make space, etc. And um, so you, you know, uh, feel free to write it down. If you share it with anyone or, or men, uh, mention it to anyone, do please credit me because um, uh, I kind of understand it, uh, the workings. Um, but um, yeah, feel free to use it. It's, um, I, I, I come up with these things to help people in their own practice. So um, yeah, feel free to use it. This video will be up for a few days uh, before I uh, transfer it across the website. So anyway, that, that's enough from me. Um, what have I got going on? Well, uh, next week I'm going to start a new class on uh, Monday early evening, 6.30, one and a half hours. Um, I, it's going to be an intermediate class. Uh, I've noticed that uh, on my Tuesday and Wednesday late morning classes, it's sort of drifting into that direction because I need to have a, uh, an opportunity to teach into me intermediate stuff. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to dedicate Monday evenings, 6.30 till 8 p.m., uh, hour and a half uh, from next week um, uh, for as an, uh, for an inter intermediate class so that my Tuesdays and Wednesdays can be gentle flow for all levels. Um, other things, uh, next Saturday, I believe I have a Saturday morning retreat. And um, uh, the other thing is, um, yes, I'm going to be getting, getting together. I've, I've taken too long to do it, but um, getting to, together the um, part two of the structural integration course, which you can do as a standalone if you haven't done part one, uh, because they feel it's just from a different aspect, different perspective. Uh, the structural intelligence course will... Um, uh, It'll be on Sundays, three-hour workshops for six Sundays. And I, I may well do um, an intro workshop that you can join. Um, I've yet to sort of work out the logistics. Uh, the, the Monday evening class and the Structural Inter Intelligence course part two is not yet up on the website. That's, that's for me to do later on today. Um, <clears throat> yes, other than that, uh, that'll do. Um, yeah, I shall see you uh, same time, same place next week. Much love to you all. Bye now.